what is up guys welcome back to the channel and welcome to this video for this one we will be looking at the team selection for croatia for the euro 2024 tournament which will be taking place in a few days time in germany We start off with the team selection. Now, Zlatko Dalic has a bit of a problem. He's got too many players to fill certain positions and then not enough to fill others. I think we can start off firstly with the defense. Now, I think the most important player defensively for Croatia has got to be Josep Guardiol. Now, playing for Manchester City as both a left-back and a centre-back, Guardiol has proven that he can be flexible. He can play both an offensive role and a defensive role. He did get a few goals for Manchester City as well. And I think Croatia will be hoping that maybe he can get one or two for them as well. However, I think the big problem is if you ask Radiol to start playing offensively, it then leaves a gap in the back line of Croatia. And they seem to be stretched pretty thin already there as it is. If we look at Croatia's midfield, however, I think this is where the stars come out. Three players I gotta talk about here. Firstly, Luka Modric from Real Madrid. The kind of player who can pick passes at range, who can control a game, who can dictate the tempo, who can take long shots, who can play fantastic balls in from set pieces, and Croatia's captain. I think they will be looking to Modric to inspire them to fantastic performances in this tournament. Next to him, I think we'd have to put Mateo Kovacic, Manchester City's midfielder. Like Modric, Kovacic too can control the game, can dictate tempo. But I think unlike Modric, Kovacic gives you a little bit more defense as well. While Modric will be focusing on offense, I think Kovacic will be focusing on more keeping things stable in that center. Being able to switch between attack and defense at will, but also having great passing range and ability. And finally, I think I'm going to have to talk about Brozovic. Now, Brozovic used to play for Inter Milan before leaving Europe altogether, going to Saudi Arabia and signing for Al Nasser. And I think all it's done is sort of create a situation where everybody else is underestimating Brozovic. He's still a fantastic player, like Kovacic and Modric, able to play fantastic passes, has great range, able to dictate the tempo. But I think he's even more defensive than Kovacic. So you could look at it in such a way that Modric would be more attacking, Kovacic would be central, and Brozovic would be more defensive. But I think in midfield, that's where all the action will be happening for Croatia. When we look at the front line, I think Croatia's main threat will come from Ivan Perisic. Now Perisic has had stints in Europe at Inter Milan and at Tottenham Hotspur. He currently finds himself employed in Croatia on the books of Hajduk Split. Now, Perisic unfortunately does not have the pace that he had in his younger years, but he still has the technique to be able to beat players in 1v1 situations. He's got the dribbling ability to slice through defenses if it's necessary. He too has great passing range on him, able to play the passes from out wide while those three central midfielders will be controlling things centrally. I think Perisic here needs to look at his consistency because that's been a major issue for him. During his periods at Bayern Munich, Inter Milan and Tottenham Hotspur, Perisic was the kind of player who could play great on one day and then just be completely invisible on the next. Okay, on to the tactics. Now, Zlatko Dalic usually uses a 4-3-3 formation with Croatia. This is a formation that puts a lot of emphasis on keeping the ball, dictating the play, and also channeling a lot of those attacks through the center of the midfield. And with players like Kovacic, Modric and Brozovic, he would be foolish to not take advantage of that. I think, however, Croatia might come up a little bit short here when it comes to their wing play. When it comes to right back and left back, you could perhaps say that Guardiol would play left back and perhaps Stanisic would play right back. But the problem is up front. When we look at their wingers, even Perisic can only control one wing at a time. So other players like Kramaric are probably going to have to step up. When we look at their central striker, I think that is a major issue for Croatia. The 4-3-3 kind of works in such a way that 
the front line is supposed to stretch the opposition defense and therefore give the central midfielders more space to dictate play, being able to sort of shift the tempo and shift the ball and the focus of the attack from left to right or centrally at will. But I think Croatia are going to struggle here because I think most of their attacks are going to go through that left wing via Perisic. I think in terms of their right wing and in terms of centrally, I do think they're going to struggle to create opportunities there. I think this is where Zlatko Dalic kind of has to show a bit of flexibility in his game plan. I think actually a 3-5-2 formation would work better for Croatia. What it does is put more emphasis on their center. I know the center back pairing right now isn't as strong as it used to be. I think we're going to see Vida and Sujalo perhaps playing. But I think what a 3-5-2 does is it compensates for a weak center back pairing by putting in a center back trio instead. And then it focuses more on playing the ball to your midfielders. Having wing backs who will possibly go up and down when it's necessary, but not putting so much emphasis on wing play altogether. Up front, when you provide Petkovic with a strike partner, I think it takes a lot of pressure off him to perform and to get those goals. I think that in particular, that number nine role is an issue for Croatia. They've struggled to replace Mario Mandzukic and it's really, really shown. They're a team that creates a lot of opportunities, but they struggle to get the job done. I think here Croatia will be looking to keep the ball as much as they can. They don't have pace, so they're not going to be looking to press or to defend quick counter-attacks. They're going to want to limit the opposition as much as they can, giving them the wings but staying stable down the middle to make sure that they can't be broken down centrally and perhaps just push the opposition wingers closer to the touchline, further away from the goalpost, to limit any damage. Okay, on to the verdict. Now, I think already I've highlighted some problem areas for Croatia. In terms of centre-back, when you look at them, they no longer have Dijan Lovren there, and that's understandable. Lovren has gotten along with age, and he's no longer the player that he used to be. But they still are looking to Vida. And Vida as well is not as young as he used to be. I think if Croatia get caught on the counter-attack, they will have some major issues. Centrally, in terms of their defense, that is a major issue. When we look at them up front, I think centrally there too, it is a major issue. I think they don't have that striker who can just hold up the ball, get goals, a massive threat aerially and on the ground. And it started to really, really show. I think teams know now that if you leave Croatia to keep the ball in the center of the park, Modric, Kovacic and Brozovic are going to try and play long balls. And those are pretty easy to defend. You just need to have defenders who are alert and who are man-marking the options for those passes. I think what Croatia are going to end up doing is playing more on the tactical side of the game. They're going to be looking to draw fouls and then convert from those fouls through dead ball opportunities, whether it's free kicks, penalties, even corners. I think Croatia are a very physical team. I think in terms of technique, yes, those three central midfielders have fantastic technique and fantastic intelligence. But I think the rest of the team needs to focus on their physical ability and their endurance if they're looking to succeed here. Defensively, I think when we look at their goalkeeper as well, Livakovic is not really the best goalkeeper in the world right now. He's playing for Fenerbahce, and I think that does kind of mean that he can perform, but I think more likely than not, when he comes up against players who are of a higher caliber, he's going to struggle. I think this little graphic encapsulates Croatia very, very nicely. Centrally, in terms of their midfield, they are fantastic. Maybe the best central midfielders at this tournament this season. But I think in front of them, that orange patch shows us that they have an issue in terms of converting chances. When we look at the back, centrally as well, there's a bit of an I issue there. I think Livakovic might be a decent goalkeeper, but I don't think he's right up with the best of them. I think when he comes up against players of an equal caliber, he's going to struggle. So they get an orange there too. On the wings, I don't see any pace in Croatia. I think they're going to be a very static team, not too dynamic. 
I think their passes are going to dictate their movement as opposed to their movement dictating where the ball will go to. And I think that's why they get yellows in both wings in terms of attack and defense. I think if I have to rate them in each of these three departments, defensively, Croatia get a 3 out of 5. I think they do have certain players who can do certain roles very well, but I think as a unit, they might struggle. Midfield-wise, I think they have the best central midfielders in the world right now. Easily. I'm going to give them a 5 out of 5 here, and I don't think that's overestimating how great they are. All of these players are going to play exactly as you want your central midfielders to play. Keeping the ball, dictating tempo, moving things around. Up front, I think there's another issue. And I'm going to give Croatia a 3 out of 5 up front. I think here, they struggle to convert chances. They struggle to make it count from open play. I think also knowing that they maybe don't have an out-and-out out number 10 is going to put more pressure on these strikers, at least not in their 4-3-3 formation. I think if Zlatko Dalic does change to that 3-5-2, it allows him to put a player in that number 10 role and then rotate that player. You could have Modric in the first 15, then Kovacic and then Brozovic, and then just keep switching them to confuse the opposition, to confuse pretty much anybody looking to shut them down in that midfield. I think knowing that Croatia are in the group of death, with Italy, with Spain and Albania means chances of them topping this group are very slim. I think they could perhaps finish second or third and progress that way. But I don't see Croatia getting further than the round of 16 here. Maybe a quarterfinal place is a bit of a stretch, but I don't see them getting any further than that. And for that, I think Croatia get a total score of 11 out of 15 for this tournament. Hi, <laughs> uh, thank you for making it to the end of this video. Um, we really appreciate the watch time um, and the fact that you took some time out of your day to spend it with us talking about the sport that we all love. Um, if you enjoyed the content, why not, you know, drop a like down below or comment in the comment section. Um, maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. And I mean, while you are here right now, have a look at some of our old videos too. Um, they should be appearing on the screen right now along with that subscribe button. So you know exactly what to do. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And have a great day out there. And we hope to see you again very, very soon. Thanks. Stay safe.